Hi, my name is Finn. Today I will be teaching you about the way the ancient Incan civilization ran their government. Let's start, start at the top of the Inca, Inca hierarchy. Who is the Sapa Inca? The Sapa Inca was the leader of the Inca Empire. Sapa Inca means sole ruler. The Sapa Inca owned everything and promised to take care of everyone. He was also the only person who could make new laws. The type of government the Inca used to rule their large empire is called a hierarchy. Right below the Sapa Inca, there were four Apos. They each oversaw a quarter of the empire. The Apos were usually, usually closely related to the Sapa Inca. There were eight governors who oversaw an eighth of the empire, 20,000 households, and they reported to the Apos. There are two officials or administrators in each province who each oversaw 10,000 households. They reported to the government, who oversaw all 20,000 households in that province. Those two officials or administrators oversaw 10 Caracas, who were each in charge of 1,000 households. Under each of those Caracas, there are two more people, who each oversaw 500 households. Under them, there are five people, who each, who were each in charge of 100 households. At the lowest level, an official oversaw 8 to 10 households. Workers were the lowest people in the Inca hierarchy. The government controlled all aspects of people's lives. Army, uh, army officers, priests, judges, and tax collectors all got special privileges. Most of these people came from the noble class. Now I'm going to describe the various jobs during the Inca, Inca civilization. Most of the people in the Inca empire were workers. Workers lived in groups called aliyus. Aliyus had 10 to 20 people in them each. Um, the amount of land given to the aliyus was determined by the number of people in that aliyu. The common people of the Inca Empire had no rights, could not run a business, and could only own the things necessary for their job. They couldn't even voice their opinions. Most of the people in the Inca Empire were farmers. The Inca Empire always needed more workers. It was estimated that for every eight workers, there is a government worker. Tax collectors paid a very, played a very important role in the Inca government. There are many levels of tax collectors in the Inca Empire. There was one tax collector for each alley, and each of those tax collectors reported to a higher-up tax collector who was in charge of multiple tax collectors, and so on and so forth. This determined their place in the social scale. Tax collectors tracked the amount of workers, how long they worked, how much they produced. The Inca people paid taxes in a very different way than we do today. Every year, each male worker between the age 16 and 60 had to pay a service tax called a mita. A mita was paid with labor. This was how they were able to build their empire so quickly. Billions of hours spent building, mining, fighting in the army, and other forms of work. The Inca government used many strict laws to keep their people under control. There were laws about what clothes you could wear, what crops you could grow, and many others. The Inca nobles had less strict laws. When the Sapa Inca made a new law, he told the top tax collectors, they told the lower ones, so on, until everyone knew the new rule. If people broke the law, there was very harsh punishments. Punishments range from being whipped, to having your eyes gouged out, to being hung. Um, one form of punishment was the begging bowl. People in the begging bowl would have to say their crimes and punishments over and over. This way, everyone knew the punishment for crimes so they wouldn't commit them. Religion and Inca government were closely tied together. The Inca people believed in and worshipped lots of gods and goddesses. Inti, the sun god, was the Inca people's most important god. The Inca people thought that their kings, or Sapa Inca, were, la were related to Inti. Inca used technology or math in every part of the government. To keep track of statistics, the, Inki, the Inca used a quipu. A quipu was a string of knots which was easy to transport and could re decimals up to 10,000. The official language of the Inca was called Quecha. The official, all official businesses was done in that language. The Inca
America also made almost 25,000 miles of roads. The Inca Empire continued to expand due to their conquest. Kids from conquered tribes would be taken to the capital to learn the Inca way and then brought back to teach their village. The Inca Empire was huge because they were constantly trying to conquer more tribes. Everything that the conquered tribes had was now property of the Sapa Inca. Hopefully you are now an expert on the Inca government.